<laughs> Another MAGA meltdown over what the hell now? We'll tell you the breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson and we have a great show for you tonight. We have former prosecutor and author Tristan Snell joining us. He wrote this fabulous book out today, out this week, I believe, Taking Down Trump, 12 Rules to Prosecuting Donald Trump by someone who did it successfully. Yes, he did. So he is here with us to talk about his new book and how he um, successfully prosecuted the Donald. So stay tuned for him. We'll bring him in in a couple of minutes. But first, um, Rick, the MAGA meltdown this week over Taylor Swift is glorious. It's asinine, but glorious. Uh, uh, Tara, there are days you wake up and you say, if I were trying to absolutely shit wreck the other team, if I if I had a spy in their in their conference room giving them terrible damn ideas. The pinnacle of Bad Idea Mountain, the, 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 you, you get to the top of Bad Idea Mountain by passing the burning tire dump. <laughs> then you go through the radioactive waste swamp. <laughs> then you go up the side of trash heaps. And then you're on the top of the mountain where all the burning tires are and school buses are raging into them. That would be where this idea came from. Yeah. The pinnacle, the pinnacle of culture war stupidity is to say, Let's go ahead and declare culture war on Taylor Swift, the most popular entertainer in the in world. The world. In the world. Like literally contributing to the GDP. Okay. Like Taylor Swift is huge. And these dumbasses in MAGA think they're going to take her on. Why? Why? Because she's a deep state secret yes, she's a deep sleeper state. agent i mean right. come on we and all she, know that she doesn't support donald trump and maga so um if you guys have not seen some of the freakouts this week coming from maga and the right wing of oh course we have it all packaged nicely for you here's a taste Maybe she just bought into all the lies about conservatives and Republicans that they're racist and sexist and homophobic and xenophobic and transphobic and Islamophobic, that Republicans and conservatives want dirty air and water and a total ban on all abortion with no exceptions. It is so scary. There was a recent poll. One fifth of Taylor Swift fans said they would back whichever candidate that she endorsed. 18% of voters are more likely to back a Taylor Swift endorsed candidate. A single post of hers led to 35,000 new registrants. That's arguably more power than the president. Biden effectively has Taylor Swift as his VP. Taylor Swift's cat is valued, one of them is valued at $97 million because of its Instagram impact. Her cat? Her cat. Brain dead, low information voters. Of course, I'm talking about Swifties. We don't have a Taylor Swift on our side, but you know who we have? We have Kid Rock, we have Ted Nugent, we have influencers, right? We have all these people, John Voigt. What world are we living in? Sure seems planned. Nothing but a psyop. The Pentagon psyop unit pitched NATO on turning Taylor Swift into an asset. Taylor Swift, of course, also a psyop for the NFL wives out there. Don't believe everything Taylor Swift says. We're all begging you. But it would be the single dumbest thing a mega superstar could ever do. Don't get involved. Don't get involved in politics. We don't want to see you there. And, uh... Let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now, okay? I mean... You know, <laughs> the, my favorite part, of course, was Pizza Jack Posobiec, the, or, the one of the original promoters of the Pizzagate conspiracy theory mm -hmm. and uh, alt-right thought leader, uh, to put it as mildly as I can. Um, That's an oxymoron. Uh, Saying we don't need Taylor Swift, we've got Kid Rock, right? We've and got Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent, we've got influencers, we've got John Voight. I, I mean, on. John Voight's a great actor, but he's also cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and um, like 100 years old. So, if that's who they're gonna go with, my money is on Taylor Swift. But I think yes. that we, yes, easy bet, easy yes. bet. And before we move on to the next subject matter. Um, we have a special treat for you. So oh, yes. last week, last week we decided to start doing dramatic readings of certain things. So this week in the Wilson Setmayer Players yes. presents to you 
inside the Trump war room. I'm Chris LaCivita, and I'm here. So I, I'm going to start the, the act by be playing Chris LaCivita, Donald Trump's chief strategist. We're going to give you the names of the characters because it, it we'll have to follow along. Give us a polling update. Polster, the attacks on women are... Don Jr. Working. They're working, right? Polster, combined with Dobbs, have... Jared Kushner. MBS has some ideas about dealing with women. Polster, uh, they've led to a massive gender gap. Ivanka, for daddy, right? Polster, no. La Civita. ideas, people. Bannon, well, we could attack Taylor Swift. Polster, what? Stone, let's call her a deep state plant. Bannon. A Sharia Caliphate Marxist Antifa super soldier. <laughs> Jones. She's an octosexual clone from Epstein's lab. La Civita. Octo what? Jones. I've said too much. Ivanka. Isn't she popular? Jared. Silence, woman. Actually, silence, woman, or I'll call the Ministry of Virtue. <laughs> Bannon, Mr. President, this is my best idea since January 6th. Trump, make it so. <laughs> Scene. You know, folks, improv is hard. Acting is hard. Our brilliant producer, Michelle Kinney, is probably rolling her eyes back in her head right now. She's over theater how trained. My acting is, but I'm just a humble screenwriter. Listen, the reason why we did that is because Rick at 6.30 this morning wrote that on his Twitter and it was effing hilarious. And I said, this is perfect for our weekly dramatic reading. So we hope you all enjoyed. Uh, you could go on my Twitter and Rick's because I've retweeted it if you want to read it again. It's actually quite funny. So yes, this is how ridiculous this whole thing is because I don't think it's that far off, Rick. I really don't. I feel well, like I really something either. like that actually happened or these dumbasses actually thought that let's, let's go after Taylor Swift was a good idea. Stuart tweeted this morning is, you know, we've been in some war rooms before where, where really crazy dumb ideas happen, but this is the absolute <laughs> pinnacle dumb idea. And you can see in the faces of all those Fox hosts, by the way, they get it. Mm -hmm. They get it. And they're in a, they're in a absolute panic right now, because on the one hand, all the new media types at Newsmax, OAN, online weirdos, all the all the Bannon like types, they're saying, oh, Taylor Swift's a communist. She's a Marxist. She's a deep stater. She hates America. And even the people at Fox are like, oh, what are we going to do now? Right. They're caught in a real wedge. Yes. And the thing about it is that they I'm were seeing the numbers. They're, me too. They're seeing the numbers. I mean, Taylor Swift tweeted once to go register to vote and like 35,000 people registered to vote in 24 hours. She has right. real political power and they know it. And there was another poll that showed that one in two, one in five of her supporters would vote for whoever she supported. Whoever she said, yes, I support them. 20% of her, of her fans are like, okay, we'll support them. So like they're freaking out because these are people who are in their voting demographic or their parents and they they, they don't want this, but I'm here for it. Let them take on that behemoth. I'm team Taylor Swift. I think she's fantastic. She's kick-ass. She's talented. And I don't think she's going to back down one iota. Well, my fiance, Renee, is a Swifty. And as I like to say, a Swifty at 50. <laughs> um, and and she posted pictures from the concert. And then she's like, I, she's like, you haven't been. You don't get it. Because everyone there walks out of that room happy. Yeah. And everyone there is singing and having fun and loving each other and, and having a wonderful moment. And it really speaks to like how broken these people are because it's yep. not just her political opposition to Trump. It's the fact that she represents optimism and some joy in the world. Yes. And God, they hate that. They and hate she's a woman. So they can't stand the fact she's a billionaire, a legit billionaire that oh, yeah. worked her way up from nothing and off of her talent and her smarts. She's a generational right. talent and, and became a billionaire. And they can't stand it because Donald Trump is a fraud and he's a half-assed billionaire. And, um, you know, if that, there's always been questions and they can't stand it. So, which leads me to 
something else they can't stand, which is Nikki Haley. So she's still around. She's still in this thing. Somehow. Um, she's raising money because every time stuff like this happens, they're going after right. Taylor Swift and they see the numbers with women. Haley, people are like, I'm going to give her money. I don't care if she's not going to win or make it. I just want her to stay in the race and troll right. Trump, which she's been doing, still staying, you know, cut, stopping short of going after him fully, but she's still trolling him about his age, about him being 100%. senile. Keep it, keep it up. I say more power no. to you. Keep it up. <laughs> well, something that's another good thing for her case, and then we're going to bring in, in Tristan. This poll that came out, I mean, not great for Biden, that showed a CNN poll today that showed that Nikki Haley beats Biden in the general election by 13 points. Now, that's registered voters, not likely voters. But if the Republicans were really about winning and putting the best candidate forward, because like elections are supposed to be about winning, she should have she should win the nomination. They should kick Trump to the curb. But they're not about winning. Right. They're in a cult. So, yeah, good luck they're, with that. they're not the the. The difficulty you've got today, you've got people like Marjorie Taylor Greene out there saying oh. Nikki Haley's consultant should be put in jail. Jail, yeah. Oh, is that how it works now? Right. Yeah, that sounds like a no, democracy. How the label thinks it works, but okay. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that ain't a democracy, folks. I've got no. news for you. They keep telling us what they want to do. They're saying the quiet parts out loud. Well, speaking of that, there were a lot of things that had happened since last Thursday, including the fact that Donald Trump had to pay 83, he's been ordered to pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million. Uh. So who better to bring in than our guest tonight, who is someone who, who has successfully prosecuted Donald Trump and his BS organization and charity, Tristan Snell. He's a lawyer, legal commentator, and now author. He, while serving as the Assistant Attorney General of New York, he prosecuted successfully Trump University, the Trump Organization, and Trump himself. And his new book is out. It's called Taking Down Trump. Lays out the 12 rules for prosecuting Donald Trump by someone who successfully did it. And he is with us tonight. Tristan, it's great to have you on and finally see you in person. We've been Twitter buddies for years. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you again. I had Tristan on my podcast a couple days ago. Yes. So we're all, uh, we're all caught up. But let's... Uh, Let's dig into the book because it really is worth a read on on the ground rules that you've discovered for beating this guy. Yes. Well, the thing about that, though, is that before we talk about the book, I just wanted to get his reaction to the E. Jean Carroll verdict first. And then we'll talk about yeah. the book because it's um, it's remarkable. Trump has never been ordered to pay, I don't think, this amount of money for anything ever. And um, I wanted to get your your reaction to to that trial and what and what how Trump has reacted to it. Hang on, I'm, I'm going to create a prop in Trump to <laughs> You wanted like my props. reaction. I think it's there. That was, that, was, that was my best confetti in like. 10 hey, seconds. I, we got it though. <laughs> Listen, we did it. We did a hey, dramatic hey, reading. So I know, I loved it. That was fantastic. So, uh, yeah, uh, confetti, popcorn, whatever, balloons. You know, it was that was. Uh, I was definitely here for it. Um, uh, and yeah, that was amazing. It's about what I thought it was going to be. Uh, they actually came in probably a little bit higher than I was expecting. I thought it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 75. Interesting. Uh, I did think they were going to lower the boom on him with, with punitives. They did. Uh, I think that the stuff that Trump and Haba tried to pull at trial probably added 20 to 30 million of that by, by themselves right there. Uh, the judge tells you, please don't oh relitigate these issues that have already been decided. And what do you do? You get up on the stand and have him relitigated. He admonishes you, uh, tells the jury to disregard. But the thing is that what was the jury really looking for there? They were looking for, A, is he still continuing to defame her to this day? And, of course, they were seeing that. And, B, is there anything resembling, like, oh, it's a gray area. Maybe there's some contrition. Maybe there's something else. No, 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 no. So they were just like, that's it, punitives. <laughs> so you're, you know, so now he's going to have to deal with that whole issue as well, on top of everything else that has been going wrong for him legally. Uh, but you know, so much winning, so much winning, so much winning, so much winning, winning, winning bigly. Yeah, um, you recently told Vanity Fair that those who investigate Trump need to quote stick to the facts and avoid flashiness. Uh, yep. You said you cannot let his counterattacks in any way, shape, or form divert you from the mission. That made me think of his lawyer, his lead lawyer in that case, Alina Haba. Um, 
who is everything you said that they shouldn't be. I mean, that's exactly right. That's a very good point. I hadn't really thought of it exactly like that before, but that's a very good point. She is exactly the antithesis of what you want to have as your lawyer uh, in that situation. And the AG's office, like you don't, you're not, it's not like we're going to be running around thinking about too many people that, that did that matter. Uh, you know, maybe eventually we'll, we'll learn more about who they are, but we're not finding out about them right now. They're not becoming household names right now. And that's on purpose. When you work in that office, you're there to do the job. You're not there to, to, to get your name in the papers. That's not what right, you're there right. for. You know, the fact that I've now been running around doing all this media stuff is because I was running around doing it after I left. You don't do that while you're there. It's not that kind of office. And your job right. there is to put your heads down, uh, you know, and, 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 and deal with all the things that are not fun about law. It's about, it's, it's honestly, it's about dust and paper cuts and carpal <laughs> tunnel syndrome. Like <laughs> that's what practicing law is, uh, you know, it, it's like, there's all the unsexy stuff and just building a giant pile of evidence that just knocks everybody else over. That's what that office is about. And they're continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. Rick, I think we should show verdict and then we'll get into I Tristan's so, book. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. So do Lincoln that. Project updated their um, ad called Abuser to mm. reflect the latest uh, E. Jean Carroll case. And it's called Verdict, voiced by our own Michelle Kinney. Take a look. Every woman knows the terror of sexual abuse and assault. Too many of us know the pain firsthand. Some attack us mentally. Some go beyond that. For too many, it's physical, even fatal. There's no excuse for sexual assault and abuse. Unless I don't even know who you're Republican is. Donald I Trump. No idea who she is. Supporting she Donald Trump sends a message to every scam. abuser. Every rapist has been ordered to pay and every man who's ever used his power to, to hurt a woman. Because if he can do it, why shouldn't they? Oof. Wow. That's a good one. One of many. <laughs> well, we don't we don't play around pure here. Heat, pure heat. You know, it's this good. is one of those things, though, that it's like we make a lot of hard ads, yeah. but but I really believe at a fundamental level that this election will end up being decided by women who have watched Donald Trump and finally reached the point where they get it. Yep. Where they finally I understand agree. it. That's why you're seeing numbers with for Biden right now yep. opening up a 10, 12 point lead with women across yes. the country, almost everywhere. It's not just Dobbs. It's 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 this sort of thing. It's his cavalier attitude towards towards you know the fact that he sexually assaulted somebody, and, and he still continues to attack and defame her and send his people to 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 harass her. I mean, it's just an astounding moment. And I think uh, this this was a hard ad. This was a really uh, it was it wasn't one of those ones where we sort of laugh about the yeah. oh, we kicked the shit out of him. This was like it was emotional. Was, yeah. Yeah. Even hard, it was hard, you know, even for Michelle to to do that, you know, as she a, really as a woman, it, and she though, nailed right. it, nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, that that gap is now, uh, you know, the Quinnipiac poll, the new yep. one. Yep. I, what was it? It was twenty two point lead yep. among women. Correct. And that was up from twelve six weeks ago, and then it's a and it's a four point five and a five point swing total toward Biden. But that's very much you can see with the numbers there. It's driven by that wide gap with women. Right. So it, it was something that was getting talked about right when you guys were doing the uh, the the, uh, the the war room drama. I saw it because I was uh, sitting in the green room right. at Morning Joe this morning, and as they were talking on on the show, though, uh, somebody speculate you know basically just went straight for it, saying like, "Look, maybe we're starting to see some women." wake up to the E. Jean Carroll case and how all of that has gone and that that might have actually had a palpable and immediate and very big impact mm -hmm. in that polling. And I think that's a very interesting point. Yep. yep. Between yep. that and the way he's attacking Nikki Haley. That too. Uh, the com actually, yeah, the that combination. Was, yeah, I think that's exactly right. The combo of that. And, and he, he, 
He never goes after people harder than he does when he feels like he's been betrayed or wronged by a woman. Right. right. That's oh, what yeah. really drives him nuts. You know? Indeed. Yeah. And then they become dogs and all right. men. All bird know, brains. All that sort of Trumpian. Right. That's dogs right. and yeah. bird brains. And I would was, never be with that ugly head. Right. Mm-hmm. right. But that was, but that was, you know, that's, you know, who are the people that he's gone after the very hardest? It was, it was Hillary. It was right. Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, yep. you know, Eugene Carroll, how, how, how much he goes after Letitia James. Yes. Um, you know, he's going to go after Fonnie Willis harder among the judges. The one he's had the most uh, vitriol reserved for is judge Chutkin. Yeah. Don't be a so black a woman. <laughs> Even worse. It's not enough. Right? Don't he, be a woman he, of color. He, just, he, then he really goes crazy. So oh, yeah. it's, it's going to be that trial is going to be extremely interesting for how that that happens if he if he pulls more of these antics and what he does it's for sure yeah but but yeah i think you guys nailed it with that ad and i really do believe i think rick you're totally right i think that his suburban woman problem is about to get a lot worse i think so too i definitely think so well that actually leads me to uh, a question i wanted to ask you about the cases because you know in your in your book you go through different steps and things of what to do to successfully prosecute Trump. Um, and uh, since you brought up Judge Chutkin, I wanted to ask you, out of all the cases that Trump is is facing right now, which one do you think is the strongest? And do you think he'll see a, we'll see a conviction this year? Which case? Yeah, so I'm going to give a two-part answer to that question. There's the, what if you took the case in a vacuum, like you were in a law school class on uh, how to be a trial lawyer, uh, and which one would you pick if you wanted your best chance of winning uh, versus what will happen in real life? If you had to pick it in a vacuum without worrying about who the judge was or anything like that. Can I guess? I would actually. Can I guess? I would guess. Yeah, documents but, case. Yes. Because yes. it's such a, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Like it, it, the facts fit that situ- that that law so well. The retention of defense documents, it's literally what he did. The law says you have to be asked to return them and then you don't knowingly and right. then you've committed this crime. And it's like, you couldn't ask for a better law for that set of facts. It's exactly and spot on. We have it on video. We have and and the, we think, documents. And, right. We probably when, I, when, when I walked out the door of the Pentagon 30 years ago, <laughs> at the last day of the Bush, the younger, the older Bush administration, yep. If I had taken all those top secret documents oh. in my safe, got them in my briefcase, and took them home, I'd be in jail. You'd see. Yeah, I would still, have gone you to would, jail. You would never have got you. We would never have seen you again. You'd be nope. gone. You yep. would never have heard That's of me. Right. I would be in jail. Done. Yeah. So, yep. So that's in a vacuum. In the real world, I'm going to go with the J6 DC case, uh, which is also quite strong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think that it is, it, overall, it is definitely the clear winner because it's a very strong case. It was built to be lean and fast. It's only a few counts. It's only Trump as one right. defendant. We don't have the giant mess of like, how the hell do you fit all the defendants in a courtroom that you're going to have right. in Atlanta? Sure. Um, it has a lot more weight than the New York case, uh, although we shouldn't sleep on that one. Uh, and the D.C. case, look, the, the problem there is like, hello. DC Circuit, if you're listening, like, please, like, just finish. Just put the pen down, put the computer down. Like, you did it. We, you probably right. wrote 200 pages. It's going to live for posterity. I'm sure it's brilliant. Please stop editing the damn thing and release it. Like, SCOTUS has got to move faster. I still think you're talking about the immunity, the immunity the decision immunity we're waiting on. is slowing yeah. everything down, and yeah. that's right. what's holding up the works right now. I still feel, though, that we're going to see that case happen this spring. And that it's going to result in in one or more counts of, of conviction. I really do. Okay. So you okay. think SCOTUS is going to reject that case? They're not going to because, of course, Trump is going to uh, appeal the the circuit court's ruling, the appeals court, or appeal court appeals court's ruling, right? If it's against him, and then right. he'll appeal it to SCOTUS. They'll Correct. fast track it, and you think SCOTUS is going to not? They're not going to take it up. I feel cautiously optimistic that the Supreme Court is not ready to effectively put itself out of business by turning the president into a full-blown king that then can do whatever he wants. 
uh, and that would, you know, it's like, hey, uh, SCOTUS, you like this job that you've got where you get a lifetime appointment to tell us what to do uh, and go on fancy luxury trips, apparently, and not report them. <laughs> that job goes away if there's a king, because he's not going to let you just right. sit there and do whatever you want. Like, like, come on, like, if you care at the very least about kind of the ego around your job and your branch of government being co-equal or maybe in your head's superior to the other two, then maybe you're going to think to yourself, maybe we shouldn't give the president this power. Yeah. Just maybe not. And maybe that would actually help. Talk maybe unlimited the power just isn't the right move maybe, for this yeah. guy. Yeah. For this maybe, guy, maybe not. Maybe yeah. somebody maybe. else. But not for this guy. Maybe for anybody, right? <laughs> right? You know, it's like, you know, we're definitely in the territory of it's a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Yeah. You know, ben Franklin territory. Sure. And it's like yes. and 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 the Supreme Court's got a choice to make coming up, and I pray they're gonna make the right one. I I feel pretty good about it. I think we're gonna see seven, two, eight, one, and it might even be a nine oh per curiam one sentence opinion. It simply wow. affirms the DC circuit. I actually think it could go there, although I wouldn't make, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't bet money on Clarence Thomas. Though. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't, I don't, I don't think Clarence. so. We we could be headed for an eight-one that does actually require Ooh. Roberts to write an opinion, but like, oh you know, no, I, I, yeah. oh no, God forbid. Yeah, but again, be fast about it, guys. Just come on. Like I know you're right. trying it's to like, make it history. It seems to me like this: the quicker they get off the off the the mat here and just bite the bullet. Just, Go, go, it go. Sucks. Just get it. Yes. Okay. Well, just get it done. Do it. In the, get it in done. the venerable yep. words of my late grandmother, Gloria Setmayer, shit and get off the pot already. There you go. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So in your book, you talk a lot about the Trump University case, because obviously that's the one that you successfully prosecuted. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those who don't remember, give us the top line. What happened there? And what was the final result? So this was basically a wealth creation seminar of the scammiest variety <laughs> where, uh, and, and, and this, it, it ties so well in with a lot of like, you know, ultra far right politics where it's like, we're going to tell you the secrets the elites don't want you to know. Oh, You're going to get secret special access to help you get rich. Just like just Donald need, Trump. Yeah. Just like Donald Trump. And we're and all you have to do is give us your credit card. Like that's basic it, it's it's basically the Alex Jones like you know testosterone supplement thing, mm -hmm. but as a school. <laughs> imagine an entire school of that. And, and a lot and more then, expensive. And a lot more expensive instead of wasting seventy dollars on a bunch of like sawdust pills or whatever the heck he's peddling. Like right. you're gonna get you're paying $1,500 up to $35,000 to sit in a hotel ballroom and see some third rate motivational speaker pretend to uh, tell you about how to invest in real estate. And then they lie, lie, lie all through it. Donald Trump supposedly handpicked the investors. He never had anything to do with it. He supposedly created the curriculum and gave his secrets for how he invested in real estate. Completely untrue. Uh, you know, and supposedly these people were experts in real estate. Two of them had actually gone bankrupt trying to invest in real estate and failing right before Trump University hired them. Another one had come to Trump Lord. University from being a regional manager at Buffalo Wild Wing. So yes, only the best were, people. Only the best were people. These were the best real estate only investors in America. People. These were the best real estate investors in America, and they're here to teach oh you God. Donald Trump secrets for investing in real estate. But the thing is that they played on these folks that were Trump super fans, yep. like. It sounds like something that what we that we might never fall for, but if you really think about somebody that you do look, if somebody that you do really like as an entertainer and they tried to do some program, you'd be sure. favorably inclined of to think that this was something really great. And and to top it all off, you have to have a license to run a school, and you have to have a license to call yourself a university. And Trump University had none of those things, so there well, it was multiple multiple different frauds and illegalities. Uh, we investigated starting in 2011. We we did a civil prosecution suit in 2013. Uh, we 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 won a major appellate decision in 2016 that then cleared the way for us to go to trial. Trial was scheduled for spring of 2016. It got delayed because Trump was running for president, and the mm -hmm. trial judge unfortunately went along with that. It was then scheduled for post Thanksgiving, as was the parallel civil private class action. 
uh, that was done out in federal court in San Diego, which side note that led to the uh, that led to the that Mexican judge. That's right. Uh, Imbroglio. Oh, Trump. yes. I remember judge that. Curiel, but that was also about Trump University. And then that ended up resulting in after in November 2016, after the election, a global twenty five million dollar settlement uh, with our case and the other case. Uh, <laughs> and that resulted in. Uh, the victims who put in claims getting over 90% of their money back. Well, and it was at the time, the largest legal loss he had ever suffered mm -hmm. up until last week. Yes. when Eugene Carroll beat it right now. And that has to still go up on appeal and it might come down a bit, but I think e even if it's brought down a bit, it's not going to get brought down to 25. It's going to get brought down to like 60. <laughs> so <laughs> she took the record away from the AG's office but the AG's office is coming to take it back. Yeah. Because when we do get this Judge Angoron opinion coming up, which I think is now going to be Monday, my sources are telling me. Oh. Okay. Uh, not this week. I know we've been waiting for it. He said it would probably I'll be. I'll take it Monday. I'll take I'll Monday. take it Monday. I think they're going to take the weekend to keep polishing it, uh, is, is what I'm hearing. And I think that number is going to be 200 to 370 million. And so we're going to have a new record holder. Uh, it, it, and the old, the, the current record isn't even going to last a week and a half. <laughs> all the wrong records, Donald Trump I know, is, is getting the, those. All, yeah, <laughs> all of the winning. And so, yeah, that's going to be a whole other, other thing. Yeah. But yeah, I talk about the Carroll case and about the New York AG civil fraud case extensively in the book to analyze how they actually show some good examples of how the rules can be applied. Uh, both of those cases really did a masterful job of following some of these rules. The AG's office, it's really like that office's playbook. Uh, it's just that I'm the one lucky enough to get to write the book on it. Uh, but that it's really that that office, the team that we had there, we came up with all of this, even if we didn't get, give them numbers and a, and a title at the time. Yeah. Right. Now I'm trying to share all of this uh, and, and kind of get it out there so that we've got a sense of, of hope that this can be done even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, uh, even if yeah. it takes a while, but it really truly can be done. And I think thankfully a number of the folks that are bringing these cases right now, both the, both private cases as well as the prosecutions are applying a bunch of these rules. And I, and, and I think it's looking, it, it, it gives me a lot of, a lot of hope. Rick, do you have a it. question? No, no, I'm just saying, I, 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 look, I, I've always said to people, like, I don't ever have a feeling of, of like, great confidence that we're going to have some sort of magical moment where Trump absolutely goes to jail. But the, the degree to which we've got processes where the rule of law is actually starting to bite Fine, and yeah. where he can't bullshit his way out of it, he can't lie or bluster or blow it up somehow, um, it, it really is a satisfying feeling. And I think it's I think the downside of that is it's going to basically eventually devolve into the magas losing their minds to the point where where uh, what they're accustomed to isn't going to happen and so they're going to freak out and it's going to be extremely ugly so I, yeah. yeah bad I, I yeah. bad for the country take, right bad for the country when they freak well. out no they're not if, listen if they're freaking out like this over taylor freaking swift for god's sakes yeah, imagine is. Imagine what's going to happen when Trump starts to be held accountable by institutions that they no longer believe in 100%. and don't think are legitimate. Yep. I, I worry about that. We worried about uh, violence uh, in the last election. Holy shit. It's way yep. worse now. Yeah. But I think yep. the other kicker here, though, is you talk about it. You raise a good point about it's that these folks don't view these institutions as legitimate courts, prosecutors, offices. Mm -hmm. I think part of the problem that we're facing and a big reason why I wrote the book, maybe the biggest reason is that even the people who want to see Trump be held accountable and brought to justice, even a big chunk of us don't believe in these institutions anymore. We feel deeply pessimistic and cynical yeah. about them. I think and that's, that's right. a problem. If you poll people on whether or not they think, think Trump right. will be held account, if you pump, if you poll people on should, on, do, do you think Trump is guilty? It's around 54% right now, give or take, if you mm -hmm. average it out. If you ask people, will Trump be convicted? the number drops all the way down to like 35%. Yeah. Only a third of us actually think he's going to be brought to justice. So there's a chunk of people in the middle who think that he should be held accountable, but think that it won't happen. 
right? Because it and hasn't happened for so many decades. Because it hasn't happened for so decades. long. And not just with Trump. So much. Also right. Bill Cosby. Also Jeffrey Epstein. It's not just Trump. Right. It, yeah. it looks like if you have enough money and enough connections, you can rig the system and wiggle out from under anything, no matter what you right. do. Yeah. And, it's, I mean, and, and, and we and, need to and, fight against that. And we need to realize how it can be done. Um, because the other piece of this is I wrote it as a citizen's guide in a way to say we do have a role in the system. Even with things like social media, which sometimes get written off, I, I believe that the social media outrage on some of these matters actually did help move the needle on things like J6 sure. and on the New York hush money case. So yeah. there's a role for us to play too as private citizens. Yep, yeah, I agree. I agree. I have a question about the uh, New York AG's office. As a yep. fan of the show Billions, anytime I think of the New York AG, I think of Chuck Rhodes. How accurate is that character concerning the, the way that the <laughs> New York AG's office is run? <laughs> is it all I mean, Hollywood or is there, do you, have, do you watch Billions, first of all? I have, a, I have a confession to make. It's been on my list for five oh, years, eight years. You I gotta still watch have it. never gotten to it. Yeah, I've got to admit. So I, so I actually cannot answer that's that all right. Question. You got to um, watch it because you'll, yeah. I think as someone who worked in the AG's office, you'll appreciate the, the, a lot of what happens in that show. The last season is yeah. starting to get a little wonk, a little weird, but the first yeah. few seasons are fantastic. So I think, you, I, I think I you'll enjoy I my recommendation. Say, I wish I could say I'd ever seen a show that really depicted how law really is. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and even in a comic absurd way, in other words, like I believe that the best the, the best fictional depiction on on tv or film of politics is probably veep veep yeah i was gonna say the west wing but you know what you know, it, uh, veep. it's more like veep. it's veep yeah you're it's right it's more like veep, veep Rick, is on, so much say. closer it's so right. true so much so closer true. there's no there hasn't been a veep for law yet yeah i haven't seen it uh, um, maybe, maybe that's next on your list of things maybe to maybe, maybe i i i Pitch like, it. like i don't have enough other things day. To do, but... <laughs> Pitch it, pitch it. Well, All right. Tristan, I um, uh, thank you for writing this. Very much. I'm Thanks sure, for coming on. Brother. I'm thank sure you. it was cathartic for you having to relive all of that. But there's a lot of great anecdotes in there about your experiences. And and it's an easy read. So I, I hope folks thank go you. out and, and get your book, Taking Down Trump. It is out now. And uh, keep up the great work, Tristan. I'll see you on the, on the interwebs. Thanks, sir. <laughs> see you guys. It's, it's so, it you know, it's so nice to be able to finally start to see people again, I have to say, because like three and a half years that we lost because of COVID and not interacting yeah. with people that, you know, you, you get to know them, you feel like you're pals and you've never met sure. them because you've, because we've all bonded over this nightmare of Trump Trumpism thing. and uh, this, this valiant effort to be democracy defenders. So it's cool to finally start to see people again. Last night, I was at the uh, Washington Press Club Gala in I DC. I and um, I got to hang out with my buddy Harry Dunn, who's running for Congress now in Maryland, by the way. So if you guys want to support Harry, I'm going to be, uh, supporting, uh, I'm going to be supporting two congressional candidates this year um, Harry Dunn and uh, Eugene Venman. Yes, he's um, running in the district next and, to mine. And those North two Virginia. folks are American heroes for different reasons, but in the same exact causal element of the fight correct donald trump's behavior led eugene you know his brother of course yep. um and harry of course stood in the line of fire yep literally uh, and these Put people are heroes to this country and and i'm going to be helping both of them out this year yes personally. and we hope you guys all do too um it's important because it's not easy to run for yeah. office these days and what those guys went through, they really are true testaments to patriotism. The Vindmans and Harry Dunn in different ways, yeah. but yet still victimized or attempted to be victimized by Trumpism and his bullshit. So with that, we are going to continue fighting the good fight. Rick, who's on your podcast this week? Oh, man. Uh, the list is long and distinguished. I will tell you, because my calendar is up on this page. Well, you want to hear more I'm from taking... Tristan, right? The Tristan. I got Tristan out. coming up. Uh, I've got, I'm taping tomorrow, Pete Wayner and Rena Shaw. Oh, um, Rena's my and good then I'm, friend. Then I, oh, she's one of my she's favorites. Great. Then I'm doing, Molly John Fast and I are doing our weekly once a week thing that we do on a podcast. Nice. And then I'm taping Harry Lippman's podcast. So tomorrow is 
Podpalooza for me. <laughs> well, which is fine because yeah. I am solo this weekend because the fiance is going to Spain to see Real Madrid. I heard, and that's pretty cool. I'm not into soccer. When I when we were in Barcelona over New Year's, that we passed. What do I, I know? What do I know from any sport ball? I don't know anything about soccer. I'm a football fan. We're a cricket household my husband's cricket into the sport of cricket he's got a cricket clothing line called london royce cricket we like cricket we like football we like basketball not into soccer my stepdad loves soccer he grew up in croatia and he's a big soccer guy when we were in barcelona we passed by on the hop on hop off bus the whatever the barcelona sure. team is and um i was like does anybody want any gear do we want to stop here i don't know uh, nobody was a barcelona fan so i was like okay whatever but it's listen i hear it's an exciting sport People love it. There's like clubs where people get together. I think actually Michelle's husband is a big soccer fan. He gets up on yeah, weekends and goes so, and watches right? soccer at like six in the morning or something. It's uh it's a whole thing. So good for good for Renee. I hope she has a great time in Spain. It's lovely there. Have some paella for me, Renee. <laughs> mm. On that note, we will see you guys next Thursday because. We are on weekly again now for the rest of the year. So we will see you next Thursday. And we will leave you with last week in the Republican Party because there's, of course, no shortage of crazy. We'll see you next week. Are we living in the end times? Former Speaker Kevin McCarthy was fingering the, the House Freedom Caucus. I'm a little bit wet. Would you rather be smart or pretty? And I said, oh, easy. Pretty. I can fake being smart. <laughs> we do have a verdict. E. Jean Carroll did suffer more than nominal damages as a result of Mr. Trump. The whole point of this, this enormous damage, unprecedented damages now, is to tell Donald Trump to shut up. A lion, a giraffe. A whale and a shark. Does it give you any pause about him returning to office? It doesn't. A chair, a hat, a badge, a necklace. Donald Trump was the best Republican president since Ronald Reagan. How many politicians have come out on the stage and hugged the American flag? That really means something to me. Not only do we support President Trump, we support his policies. Hello, and any Republican that isn't willing to adapt these policies, are we, we are completely tomorrow? eradicating from the party. I just love you. Here in our country, the border, uh, Joe Biden uh, criminally uh, uh, possibly could be. Uh, you look at Joe Biden, he's going to go down as the most corrupt and most weak president in U.S. history. We will restore on this planet peace through Earth. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. I would be terrified if I got onto a plane and I saw a woman uh, flying the plane. Hillary Clinton facing brutal ridicule over a cringy social media post. Her com comments about Barbie. When I watched her in the fancy dress, that probably wasn't so fancy. Mr. Uh, where is yeah. The top line here is that uh, Mr. Woodward has already filed the appeal uh, in this case. This is a case of first impressions that I have said from day one is destined for the Supreme Court.